Butterflies have been known to drink blood, and that's honestly not even the worst part. Butterflies will do this weird ass thing called mud puddling, and basically it's when they try to suck the nutrients out of any organic matter. Which is why these necroflies will suck the blood from the bodies of animals that have already tapped out of life. There's a species of butterfly in Spain that is attracted to the smell of a fresh corpse, and they'll pull up to the body just to get a taste. They'll do this mud puddling thing with rotten fruit, literal deuces on the ground. Some will even drink the tears of other animals like sleeping birds or reptiles like turtles. There's even a type of butterfly that'll go out of its way to irritate the eyes of turtle and came in to force them to tear up just so they can drink the tears from minerals. And because they don't discriminate, they'll do it to you too. In fact, there are some butterflies that are attracted to human sweat. Also unrelated fact, most of a butterfly's taste buds are on its feet. So the next time a butterfly lands on your hand and makes you feel special, just know he's using you. Once he gets his taste, he'll just leave you and move on to the next. Those butterflies are just boys with wings. Let's talk about the bird that drinks literal blood. This is a vampire finch. This tiny lawyer is found only on the islands of the Galapagos. The vampire finch will peck at larger birds like the... I don't think guidelines will let me say this bird's name, but I'm gonna let the comments do it for me. These finches will peck at the birds until eventually the skin breaks and blood starts oozing out, which they will drink. Scientists believe this started because the finches would eat the parasites off the birds but accidentally break skin and draw blood in the process. But then they started drinking the homemade Kool-Aid and decided to make it culture. So now they just see bigger birds as flying blood banks. It doesn't really hurt the bird that it's getting it from and the vampire finch gets free calories to keep it alive during a drought. It's not the only thing that can drink blood without a law degree. Some bats and butterflies be on the same type of time. The more you know. Okay, so two things. One, that's not a rat. It's a South American flavored rodent called a pacarana. It's like a travel sized capybara. And two, pacaranas have really sensitive skin and putting soap on it removes essential oils from it. So best case, the soap is just mildly irritating to them. Worst case, this not a rat is in legitimate pain and is desperately trying to get it off. Either way, it's not a good look. Not to mention, if that soap isn't pet friendly, let's be real, it probably isn't, there's a good chance it could be burning its skin. Because I definitely just ruined this video for y'all, here's a pacarana cleaning itself but without the soap. And as promised, here's 10 facts about this guy. It's not a rat, it's a South American rodent known as a pacarana. It's basically an economy-sized capybara. And despite what you might think, they're super clean and will spend hours washing themselves every single day, which is a lot better than some people. They can tip the scales at over 30 pounds, making them as heavy as the average two-year-old. They're the third heaviest rodent behind beavers and the walking vibe check above. You've probably never seen one before because they're usually only active at night and there's only few places in the world you can find them. But your best chance would be booking a one-way to Peru, Bolivia, or Venezuela. Sometimes they get put on a shirt by farmers that see them as pests, but a lot of people have them as pets because they're low maintenance, quiet, and friendly towards humans when raised by them. They're cute now, but two million years ago there was a giga version of them that grew to five feet long and could be in the same weight class as the car at up to 3,500 pounds. And this hippo rat was estimated to have a bite force three times stronger than tigers today. Lucky for the world, they were and are vegans that eat mostly fruits, leaves, and plant stems. <laughs> You'll never guess what this is. So the story goes, an Australian homeowner nearly caught a heart attack when she saw a hairy foot with large claws poking out of her bathroom ceiling. And of course, it's Australia, so you kind of have to expect the worst. What she didn't expect was a Pokemon. The intruder turned out to be a brush-tailed possum. But if you called him Pikachu, nobody would blame you. And even though it looks like a beach blonde squirrel, as a marsupial, it's more related to kangaroos and koalas. They're normally not this color. Golden brush tails only exist because of a genetic mutation that causes low levels of the pigment melanin. Which is why these unseasoned possums look fresh out the Pokeball. It's not even the first time. They have a habit of constantly breaking and entering. One brush tail possum broke into an Australian bakery and proceeded to eat as many pastries as his stomach would allow before anyone could stop him. This is how they found him. Oh, he's guilty, but he regrets nothing. This picture looks creepy, but there's actually a pretty heartwarming story behind it. Rick Anderson is an Australian diver who's been exploring the ocean off New South Wales for more than 30 years. One day he was diving as usual when a shark approached him. The shark was a harmless baby poor Jackson shark that swam right up to him. Rick didn't make any sudden moves to avoid scaring her. Yeah, the shark's a girl. He started to pat her and even cradle her in his arms. Yeah, we are still talking about a shark. Also, this was seven years ago. Now every time Rick enters the water, the shark will immediately rush over to him and brush against his legs. And when he holds out his arms, the shark takes it as an invitation to lay on them. In the seven years he's known her, the shark went from a six inch pup to a six foot adult. Despite this, they're still able to instantly recognize each other. He's basically his dog and acts like it too. He doesn't even like feed her or anything, the shark's just actively choosing to be around him. And just like you'd expect from any healthy long term relationship, she's even met his family. Rick eventually introduced his three kids to the shark, who got a hug from each. 
Moral of this video. Sharks are really just the pit bulls of the ocean. Meet the real life cat dog. So there's actually a story behind this. Basically, it was one fine day with a wolf and a purr. This baby was born, and as you'd expect, it caused quite a stir. You're a goat if you got that reference, but nah, it's one of the oldest and rarest dog breeds in the world, the Hmong dog. It's an ancient dog that was believed to be first bred by an ethnic group of people from China and Southeast Asia known as the Hmong tribe. And this cat dog was really popular in the mountainous regions of Vietnam, where they were used as hunting partners and guardians. Since most believe this dog happened when a native dog was bred with a jungle wolf, they still retained a lot of their hunting instincts. Which means even though they look like the product of a really questionable one night stand, they'll chase and erase any cats they run into. I like for real, you don't want them around cats, they will always be on sight. And because they were used to hunt, they're really trainable to the point where even the Vietnamese police will use them for police stuff, I guess. And because they're so rare, getting a purebred Hmong can make your wallet at least a thousand dollars lighter. For a purebred puppy, your kids might not go to college. Because they were spawned in the cold rainy mountains, they have a thick fur coat to keep them warm and probably the reason why they're so expensive. Also, you might know this guy. This little dude from Vietnam is named Sui and he's actually a crossbreed between Hmong and I'm actually not sure what else he is. All I know is that I would commit very much first degree for him. Life, no parole, no questions asked. Here's a fact you definitely didn't ask for. Tadpoles will scream underwater to avoid getting eaten by cannibals. This is an Argentinian widemouth frog, and it's the most ambitious cannibal in the world. Not only will they go out of their way to eat their own kind, widemouths have been known to try swallowing frogs physically bigger than they are, even if it means choking to death. In fact, these frogs will keep shoving food down their throats until their stomach rips open. And it turns out, even tadpoles will eat the babies of other species of frogs. But they don't eat each other. These tadpoles will let out a short but high-pitched scream whenever they come into contact with another tadpole that's probably trying to take them off the senses. And scientists believe that scream is the only thing stopping the bigger tadpoles from friendly firing all their siblings. Which is why if you touch one of these tadpoles with an object like a spatula, it'll literally scream for its life. But of course, once they're adults, no amount of screaming will stop him from bundying his entire family reunion. Because I could be wrong, but this is the only animal in the world that'll literally unalive itself just by overeating. Except, nah, I'm not going there. Some of these frogs will Pac-Man everything until the buildup of fat causes them to go blind. Oh, and then they... This right here is a bush turkey. Smoke them. That right there is the heaviest flying thing on the planet. It's called a Cory Buster. They're found in Africa, and the biggest ones can tip the scales at over 40 pounds. It's like a five-year-old being able to fly. When they want to attract a mate, they make this loud booming call. When they want to flex on you, they sound just like Bowser. This Saharan steroid goose has a guller pouch that inflates like a white balloon which they use to make those mating calls while also dancing for female validation. Sometimes two male busters will square up and spend an hour smashing their bodies into one another while also trying to stab their rival until one eventually taps out. The winner gets all the females in the area and he'll get every last one of them pregnant and then play no part in raising any of the children. Basically every buster is a bastard. Also this African bush tweety can have a wingspan of over 9 feet and apparently they have no fear of humans. They probably should. Since they're loudest in the morning, being neighbors with one means you wake up to this. If you're a gym bro or bro wet, you can probably thank one animal for it. This absolute unit is Charles Atlas. As a kid, he was a scrawny 97 pound weakling that would get sand kicked in his face. No seriously, it actually happened. But he was too poor to go to the YMCA, so after being inspired during a trip to the zoo, he came up with his own workouts based on dynamic tension. Basically the idea of pitting one muscle against another. Not only did Mr. Atlas become a walking vibe check, he would go on to sell his workout program to millions. And fun fact, one of his clients was David Prowse, aka the dude that played Darth Vader. All this clout meant Charles Atlas became known as the grandfather of the modern fitness and bodybuilding industry. And this was all because when he was a 97 pound kid, he visited a zoo where he was inspired by... Yeah. So if Swole is the goal and size is the prize, Tony the Tiger is the reason why. The more you know- Actually another fun fact! A tiger's legs are so strong that they can remain standing even when they're dead. Now the more you know. Here's how rats got banned from an entire part of Canada. Alberta is the only place in the world inhabited by people with no residential population of rats, and rats are forbidden from establishing there. Meaning if a rat illegally enters Alberta, he and his entire bloodline will be erased with extreme prejudice. It all started when the Alberta government decided they were not having that rat nonsense on their side and declared war on them. But unlike Australia, they were actually ready. They claimed rats to be the biggest threat to national security and so created the rat control program. Like they would have conferences on how to stop rats from ratting. 2,000 posters and 1,500 pamphlets were passed around railroad stations, post offices, schools, basically anywhere you could see them. The US had a war on terrorism, but Alberta had a war on rodents. Any population of Jerry's that were discovered were quickly removed from the census with zero discrimination. Any rat that passed the Alberta-Saskatchewan border was basically signing a death certificate. Of course, this meant pet rats were very illegal, and possession of one could make your wallet a 5,000 fine lighter. I cannot express enough how on-site they were about this. 
In 2004, someone released 38 rats in Calgary, but by the time officers arrived, yes, officers were called, it was that serious. The rats were already past tense by residents, armed with brooms, 2x4s, and shovels, and whoever did it was promised a $190,000 fine. They were not f***ing around. There's even a hotline you can call in case you see a rat. After 70 years of rat genocide, Alberta is now the only place on the planet where you can find people but almost no rats whatsoever. If a rat is sighted, it's almost guaranteed to make the 6 o'clock news. Moral of this video, don't be bringing that rat over there, they not having it.